I'm sure I'm complaining in the video. Sounds like something I do. Do you guys remember this game? Kaizo Mario Bros. 3. Made by Obidus One. I ran it at GDQ and I currently have the world record, but there's been a lot of talk um, about this record and how I've I think it's been standing for at least six years, right? Six, maybe seven. I'm not sure. The highlight on Twitch is like kind of old and I actually removed this video from YouTube quite a while back, so I can't remember exactly. But the question is, is it gonna last forever? Because nobody has even tried to touch it. So I think we're gonna go through the record, rewatch it, cause it's been a long time. It's a really good run. And if nobody's ever played this game, you should definitely play it. So yeah, let's go through the video, watch it. I don't remember all the mistakes, if there are any. Um, there are a couple things that I'll be able to let you guys know about. Um, yes, don't worry, there's old Mitch. We'll be able to look at old Mitch. Um, but yeah, let, let's just take a look. Let's see. So we start off, uh, we're definitely gonna be fast forwarding, pausing and rewinding. So it's like much easier and quicker. Okay, so instantly I have to reset. Nice, nice video cropping old Mitch. Let's. Where's old Mitch? Look at old Mitch. Old Mitch versus new Mitch. Look at this. Am I new Mitch? I'm old Mitch two years from now. Okay, so we got the Goomba jump. Yep, you gotta grab the mushroom. Remember I taught you guys mushroom left side, depending on what side Mario is, very easy. There's a speed run strat here where you grab the shell and you toss it. Normally you go up that pipe with damage boosting with the mushroom, but if you keep P speed, Boom, you can skip that whole section. One and done, very nice. Uh, 0 0.04 on the splits. Not really much time to save there. Nothing nothing uh, you're gonna be able to do with it. All right, level two. Um, yeah, we got the shell jump. Grab the turtle shell, everything seems fine. So far, this record will last forever. <laughs> I almost didn't make that jump, okay? There's gonna be another quick little strat here. You could jump through this. Nice, get your tail swipe, tail swipe, duck. Clip through much faster. That is definitely a speed strat, not intended. Boom. Now there is a crazy strat and I don't have the video for it, but if I tail swipe that turtle and kept it and brought it here, I could wall jump and actually keep my tail for the next level. Um. I never actually pulled that off in an RTA run, but it is something you can do. You know, pretty easy, not bad. All right, level three. Nice, the Goomba shoe. So if you had your tail for this level, you would be able to fly up at the midway point of the level. Right, you, you would get your Goomba shoe and about right here, you would damage boost and then you'd run, build P-Speed and fly up. And you'd skip the drop down here. Uh, you'd skip the pipe animation here. Um, but I've never seen anyone else ever do it, ever try it. And I've never done it in an RTA run. And I don't even think I ever tried to do it, but it is possible I have done it with save states. Very nice, very clean level. You you need the Goomba shoe. So you can't really get P-Speed or anything. As you can see in my splits, I'm not a second faster or slower here. So not bad. Seems pretty, pretty chill so far. I mean, I, not much you can really do. No mistakes, really. Um, okay, jump on him, yeah, jump on him. Not bad. Big jump. I think I'd do a little turn back here. I think that's necessary. You don't want a wall rub, you'd die. Okay, turtle shell. Nice, bounce on that. And then we're gonna drop down. Grab that mushroom. I I feel like I'm rem I I might be misremembering something, but I feel like there was a strat here where you could fly up. Yeah, if you kept your tail from the previous level as well, you'd be able to build P speed there and fly up right here. You'd skip this whole auto auto section. Nice, not bad. I really want to see somebody going for this record. I mean, so far it's just deathless. It's just, I haven't died yet. Four levels, haven't died. Anyone can do that. Nothing special here. OK. 
Okay. This level was always cool. Got the conveyor P speed. Doorways, nice. You gotta you have to jump to keep your P speed kind of like primed up there. Small jump there. This section was always so cool. It's like you gotta make sure the ghosts don't attack you, but you gotta you gotta work the conveyor and wait for the door. When I first got there for the first time, I was like, what what is even happening? I didn't even know the door would show up. That was it was so cool. Very nice. Very small jump. And clutch. Nice. If you hug that wall, you can like get the upside down spike death. So you don't really want to do that either. I am impressed at how much I'm remembering of this. Okay, here comes the water level, my favorite. Okay, so this level was always hard because you have to stay on top of your jumping out of water. So holding up and right. And then you have to really work these bombs. Or sorry, these bullets. Yeah, you got to really work these. Okay. Yep, you gotta let it go just a little bit. Delay your P-Speed build so you can make it just in time. Cause that block was about to disappear. The blocks in Mario 3, the ice blocks, grab blocks, whatever, they run out much, much faster than Super Mario World. That was a great quality of life fix. Super Mario World, they last a long time. And as you can see, I made it before the P-Switch ran out. So, I mean, it doesn't get any faster here though. You can wall jump right up, right away. Just jump into the wall, wall jump, get over. But I waited. So there is some time save right there. There is definitely some time save. Cool, deathless still, very nice. It's it's hard to get here without dying. Those troll fish, gotta watch out for those. Okay, frog suit time. Ooh, normally I go right away, but I had to wait there. I'm sure I'm complaining in the video. Sounds like something I do. Okay. This is very free. You just hold right up A and B so that you jump and keep P speed. Well, not P speed, sorry, but speed. It's weird with the frog suit. If you want to go this fast with the frog suit, you don't hold B, you hold A. You swim fast with the frog suit by holding A, not B, which doesn't make any sense. Nice little sequence break here instead of going down and around, you would go down and around, and then you'd come back up and meet yourself up. You'd come from the bottom up through here. And if you use the Lakitu's, you could just jump over, boom, get right through. And there's a cool little strat here where if you take damage, duck and slide, you can keep your mushroom. Boom, just like that. Very nice. This was before exit pipe, like power up checks were a thing. Okay. So now that I have my mushroom, there's going to be a slight sequence break here. Ah, uh, very nice. Very nice. It's, re it's really not that hard, that section. So normally you would grab your star, right? You have to grab your star because of this Goomba. Impossible to get around this Goomba. But you normally need your star to run at the bottom Right? You can see my mouse. You'd run down here along some munchers, grab a mushroom, and you'd have to make it back up here before your star runs out. But because I kept my mushroom, I was able to just get the star and come right up here and wait. Now, there is a problem though. You could save more time if you could figure a way around having to wait because when you don't have your P-Speed and you're a star, you do somersaults and you're going to see, I'm going to try and jump into the pipe, but because I'm somersaulting, it's so weird. I can't get into the pipe. And as you can see, I tried to get into the pipe right there. I couldn't get in because I was doing my spin, but now I can. And what's very interesting about that is that when you have P speed with a star, you don't do the somersault. So if you could find a way to get P speed, you wouldn't have to wait for the star to end. Very cool stuff. Impossible to get that fire flower. Don't even ask in the comments below. <laughs> okay, so here's a really cool strategy. You grab this turtle and instead of letting it pop, you do a wall jump. Well, you do a shell jump, I guess, with the turtle. Very nice.
Ooh, that, I always forgot about that troll. Now this, in my opinion, is one of the harder levels. There's just a lot that can go wrong. Every jump is very scary, R especially the beginning right away. But again, it it's not that hard. This has been a lot of years past since this run and this game. And we have seen, I mean, this was before Mario Maker 1. And think about the upgrade that all Mario runners got just by playing Mario Maker 1. Like the standard for skill heightens so much. You know, it's like, oh, you can't shell jump 13 times in a row. You're not that good then. You probably can't beat this one Kaizo level in Mario Maker. So this is a pretty decent warm up, I guess, but this is still a very good. Okay, very nice. So far, no deaths. So far, there has been no deaths. And if, if there's anything that people know about ISO ROM hacks is that beating it without dying is the harder thing. That, that's, you'll most likely have the record forever if you can beat, like let's say Grand Poo World 2. I, I mean, Grand Poo World 2 is very competitive, so I don't know if that's a great example, but when I was running Grand Poo World 2, there hadn't been anyone who'd beat it without dying yet. And the first person who would beat it without dying would probably have the record for a very long time. Kaizo games, it's hard to develop speed strats or stick to them, mainly because, you know, the, the, the goal is to get through without dying. That'll save a lot of time, each death cost, but like try to go much, much faster and not dying. Ugh. All right. Um, we didn't really miss anything. I know I was kind of talking through the frog level here, but you, yeah, you get your hammer suit, but you damage boost here so that you don't have to, you know, worry about anything. You take your damage here, grab the frog suit, and then it's very self-explanatory. Just slow frog suit working. Yeah, you grab the star so you can get through, and then you got the boom boom. Very nice. I saved a bit of time. I saved like a second in that level. Very cool. All right, so level 11. Here we go. You gotta grab your tail. You gotta fly up. Doing it in one cycle is very good too. As you can see, the P meter is gonna run out very fast here, almost instantly. And then you're gonna need to build P speed here. Ooh, but I die here. So hold on. So let's go ahead and see how much time I actually lost. So entering the level at 9.25, I entered the level at 925 and then I fell and died. Yep. And then I re-entered the level at 951. That's how much time I lost. Dang, dude. Or I guess it's all the way back until I get to the point at which where like where I died. So well, you wouldn't count the other time, but still. Over 20 seconds, I guaranteed over 20 seconds. This is interesting. I'm going for the duck. When I go for the duck fly here, that means I'm trying to go for a very, very, very tight glitch, I guess. It's hard to say, but with the Tanuki, you can turn into a statue. And when you're a statue, you don't take damage from the munchers, okay? There's munchers at the end of this level. So I'm gonna perform something very, Weird, you guys, anyone who hasn't watched this won't know exactly what this is. This is very interesting. So this is all normal. This is the only thing that's abnormal about what I'm doing at this very moment is I'm in my duck animation and I need to be ducking, um, which also makes it very hard to get the initial fly speed because you press down. We don't need to go into all that, but right here is where it comes into play. Okay, so right here. So I'm ducking, I'm ducking, okay? You see, I'm I'm inching right to get under that ledge. But we statue, we zip, and we go into the pipe without taking damage. So now I sequence break that whole thing. You're not supposed to have your Tanuki tail here. Look at that, watch it one more time. It's a very tight, you have to get right into the crease, perfect fly, right in. You have to make sure you statue, hold to the left, and to the pipe. Pretty cool. So I did take a 20, 30 second death here, but because I nailed that trick right there, I'm going to save, um, I wanna say maybe 10 
to 15 seconds. So not dying would still be faster. Let's see, let's see how this is. See this whole auto scroller area? Yeah. So you're supposed to be small Mario here. You're supposed to be small Mario here. And this is where my time save comes to play. You're supposed to take that beetle all the way until the end. But instead, we're gonna bounce, we're gonna fly, we're gonna damage boost, get P speed, and jump right up. That's gotta be like 20 or 30 seconds save, right? So it's like, this run can be beaten. Definitely, 100%. It's just, what are you gonna do? Not die and not do the Tanuki? Or do the Tanuki and not die and then just get a disgusting time? So that right there, we can ease. I love this section, it's so cool. The TAS jumps on all the P-switches because they're awesome. But to answer the question, will this record last forever? It shouldn't. It shouldn't. Right? I got the tail strat in my previous run too, which is kind of funny. Because as you can see, I didn't save any time there. Very interesting. What does old Mitch think of this? Okay, so this level isn't overly complicated. It's just a lot of tech work, a lot of movement. Grab block, keep your duck animation, keep your P-speed, grab the fly. Try and keep P-speed here, yeah, save a little bit of time. You know, get to those coins very fast. Okay, you definitely don't need to shoot all three of these guys, but we're nervous, right? The run's pretty hot, minus that death. But one death so far, not bad. Okay. Very nice. Okay, so there's one last thing about this run that we need to go over, and that is the big blocks. So there's big blocks in Mario 3 that a lot of you have seen and heard of. It's got the Tanuki suit, it's got the frog suit, and it's got the hammer suit. Well, the game is designed to only allow you to have one of those in like one world. It's very weird. I don't even know if that's the exact way to put it, but because I already hit a big block in one of the levels, it will cause the other big blocks to not have the power up in it. They're gonna be blank. And you're gonna see that actually in like Bowser's castle and stuff. However, in order for me to get the hammer suit from one of the upcoming levels, I'm gonna have to actually take a death. So this run will always have one intentional death. So from level 14 uh, to level 18, I wanna say, it's okay if I take a death and I need to take a death the fastest way possible. Just to, just to add that in there. But it doesn't, I don't have to do it yet. Normally I would wanna do it in the fortress because the little fire guys are super hard to jump over. I have a specific spot that I wanna die on every time I get there. And I think that's the second last level because when you start, you just run off, it's very easy. Um, so I don't wanna take a death here. If I take a death here, then I don't have to take a death again for the rest of the run. But it's a long death, right? Like if I died right here, that would suck. That would definitely not be worth it. So just keep that in mind for this run. It's just a refresh. You have to die to refresh the big blocks. It's a very strange thing. It's a very hard thing to avoid. So this level's pretty, pretty basic. Uh, star Escort, uh, then Star Grab. Now remember, this was all pre-Mario Maker, so these ideas are actually pretty legit and original for Kaizo. And uh, yeah, okay. So now we have the fortress, arguably one of the hardest levels. And that's where I take my death. That death would almost be as fast as the intentional death that I would have taken in the next, it was two levels from now or something. Um, so now I don't have to die again. Now my block is refreshed. And yeah, so that was a good thing that that happened there. That's the best place I'd probably want to take a death. So not really much of a time loss. It doesn't matter who you are or what strats you come up with. Anyone running this will have to take a death at some point after level uh, 12, I think it is. Because level 12, I use the, I get the big block to get the Tanuki, right? Yeah. So no matter what, you have to take a death after 12. And it was either right there at the fortress is a great spot or uh, the upcoming level. Because the upcoming level, you just fall instantly and you die. Okay, not bad. So you have to create a trail. Ooh, and I messed up the timing. So there's some time save there. Uh, this climb is definitely not perfect. Okay, looks pretty good. Ooh, little slip there. 
Looks pretty good though. This upcoming room is, this is the hardest room in the game by far. Every missed shot opens up a muncher and opens up a, a chance for you to take damage and you can't take damage. So we do a bounce strat here, go nice and slow. Yep, do some jump shots. Very nice. Now, there's something interesting after watching this though. How much do you want to bet that somebody could come up with a strat where you just go? You would save like 10 seconds on this run if you just went. Look at this. I'm waiting. I'm nervous, but it's working. What I'm is you want to go with consistency, but I mean, if you're going to try and beat this run, you would, oh my God, you would save a lot of time just by going. You would just go. Okay, so I am losing a little bit of time in this level because I did take the death. But I'm going to save that time back in the level where I normally take the death. And as you can see in my previous run, I did die in this fortress at probably a very unfortunate spot. So let's see, is it 16? Yeah, so 16, I could just drop down a pit and die right away. And same goes for 17. Yes, for anyone who doesn't know what I'm doing, let's let's watch this. When you press pause... The anim when you press pause, the animation for these specific munchers continues. So the the trick behind their difficulty gets taken away. You don't have to worry. So right, so I go to jump, and it was obviously not safe. But I pause and wait for the munchers to disappear. Then I unpause and go. And it is actually faster than waiting and rebuilding your momentum because I'm I'm keeping my momentum while I'm in the air. So I'm constantly keeping speed as I'm going. Very very cool strategy. All right. I want to say basic P, P speed work, but uh, this level is pretty difficult with the P speed. A lot of blind jumps. You, you can't really see what's going on below you. Very nice. Muncher spam. Hey, Muncher spam scary. He should have thrown in a little like the fire one in there. Sprinkle it in there somewhere. That would have been pretty funny. All right. So level 17, I would normally just jump into the spike and die, right? How does it get any faster than that? Nice. Okay. So... So overall, without that other death, that was like 20, 25 seconds and like getting the statue clip because the statue clip is not something that happened very often in runs. Well, maybe it did. I don't know. Regardless, doing the fortress faster could have been a time save. The climb in the fortress could have been a time save. The frog suit delay could have been a little bit of a time save. This level's very cool. Okay. Incoming, the best troll right here. The double muncher drop, son of a bitch. And then that extra muncher there, just in case you miss them. Very nice. This isn't Kaizo. There can't be anything nice. Okay. Level 18. Level 18, that start looks hard, but it's actually very easy. They always do pretty much the same thing and you can get like a double jump. This section is like deceptively hard. Looks easy, but it's really not. Sometimes the Goombas and the bullets don't line up. That's very annoying. Nice, got the, the double bullet instantly. I don't have to wait, that's very good. Okay. You wanna wind up some speed and I think we've all seen this before. It's a very non-unique thing. But at the time, it was kind of, I mean, you'd only seen it in one of the Super Mario World Kaizos, the little bullet bill trail thing. Ooh, lost three, two seconds here, one and a half seconds. Definitely don't need any lives here. And Bowser's Castle. So we start off with the frog suit. Now here's something interesting. There's got to be a faster way to do that, right? I mean, save a couple seconds here and there. Not not too bad. Okay. We do this part pretty speedy. Pretty good. Doesn't get any... See, see how... Okay, so here's a great example. See how those blocks, they look like somebody has already hit them and they've they're gone blank? That's what happens when there's too many blocks in one world. The game can only process so many of them. So his method of making sure that it works is to spam them. Look, there's so, look at all of them. There's so many. So this wasn't... I could have done that a little bit more optimally. 
hit the block on the left side, made the power up go out on the right, grab it, go to the pipe instead of having to turn around. That's okay, it's the end of the run. That, those are very small things that you wouldn't pay attention, but for somebody else attempting, those are good, good openings. Right on. So here comes the same thing. We're gonna have the block spam, but for some reason these blocks spawn. It's very nice. Oh yeah, that was a little bit more optimal. We got the statue troll here. Ooh, that got me easily the first time I played this. Probably got me a lot. The duck strat is very nice here. Gives a lot of room for the ceiling because that's super scary. Look at how tight this is. Okay. This is a very scary flutter because as you can see, my iframes just made it. It's so scary. This game's great. And then you have to do the head bouncing tough. Well, you don't have to. You can bounce some fireballs off the ground. It would just take you a long time to do the battle. Yeah, we did it. I did take damage though, so I did lose half a second by doing that. So there could be a time save. What does is, what is old Mitch think about it? Old Mitch looks kind of happy. Look at him. Mustache and beard. Probably weighs like 50 less pounds. Very nice. So in 1952, that was the first sub 20 minute run. First sub 20 minute run. The first sub 20 minute run, and I didn't I didn't look back. I haven't actually done runs since then. But but the question is, will this run last forever? I don't think any run can actually last forever. I mean, as long if it's not popular and it gets buried away in time, maybe that's the only way it would last forever. But this is definitely a run that people could contest. I mean, it's it's fun, it's exciting. I mean, I did 4,000 something attempts on those splits, I probably did some more. It's quick and it, it, you really feel good as a player. So will it last forever? I wanna say no, because I really hope that some people take a shine and wanna pick it up. And I mean, you can go very slow. The competition is nothing in this game right now. So you can take as long as you want to get as good as you can. And then you could try and take the record down. But regardless, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the overview of Kaizo Mario Bros 3. What a great game. Um, yeah, hope you guys all enjoy and uh, everyone take it easy. Woo!